Being able to write code from anywhere is a really cool idea. And there are a number of solutions for taking the code that's compiling and moving it off your laptop. From repls like the Rust Playground, you know, come here, to more integrated development environments like GitHub Code Spaces, actually back it up a little bit again, to even plain old CI systems. Code Sandbox then is well known for providing these kinds of sandboxes to JavaScript projects for quite a while now, but there's a catch. They've expanded into Rust. So let's go check out what that means for us. So here we are at the announcement post for Rust support on Code Sandbox. And it says, hello Rust community, you can now spin up a Rust development environment in Code Sandbox. Got of course to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. Ooh, do they do that thing where if you scroll up at all, the menu comes down, which I really don't like as a pattern because it means that when you scroll down, like, so I'm scrolling down to the top right here, I hit this or something, or maybe I go just a little bit too far. I scroll back up and now I've got 200 pixels of heading. <laughs> so it says we can spin up a Rust development environment within two seconds. I don't know what they mean by development environment yet. Most of the use that I'm used to seeing in Code Sandbox is some JavaScript framework has some demo or some docs or some example project that they have a link to their GitHub repo in some respect. And then you can use that as either a starting point or a way to view the information or something like that. So it says we get IntelliSense support and the ability to open the environment on iOS or VS Code, which is really interesting. Now, VS Code support is something that GitHub Code Spaces also supports. So if Code Sandbox is moving in the direction of being that, hey, we're going to host all of our code here. Here's all of our dependencies. Here's all everything that we need for all of our developers at our company. That makes a lot of sense. So here's a template. We can see in the bottom left that there's just a little link to a Code Sandbox template. I was looking up these numbers the other day too. Rust is getting more popular by the day. In just two years, the community tripled from 600K to 2.2 million. I don't know who's making these numbers up. <laughs> I saw different numbers when I was looking this weekend because I was curious and I, I just don't know. They're saying that due to their recent Docker support, which I think is just an import in for Firecracker, if I remember correctly. Firecracker is a, another wonderful Rust project if you're not aware of it. It's what powers AWS Lambda's uh, micro VMs as well as fly.io. So they still need to add LSP support. So maybe Rust Analyzer isn't gonna quite work. We'll see. This looks like the same link as above. So we'll click on this, we'll fork it. Code Sandbox has their own iOS IDE, as well as what looks like a VS Code extension. It is supposed to be running Rust Analyzers for auto completions, type information, and some helpers some actions basically, right? Every sandbox has a public URL. And lastly, you can export it to GitHub. So I've seen these before. Basically Code Sandbox has a pretty tight integration with GitHub. So you can have a GitHub repository that people can click a link and load in Code Sandbox. This is a different template. So we'll wanna check this one out as well. And this might be a really fun way to give you access to running code that I write in YouTube videos, which is one of the reasons that I'm excited about looking into it. So let's get right in. We'll click on the template. It loads everything in. I don't want a quick tour. We've got a Rust starter, which has a main.rs. It's running cargo watch apparently. So that's very cool. And I think we'll just fork this right away. You need to be signed in. I do have an account. I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that I signed up with GitHub last time, then click fork. And now we've got our own Code sandbox with, let's see, source main.rs. There's some information in target here. We've got a cargo lock with no dependencies and a code sandbox that uses Debian bullseye, has a bunch of dependency stuff installed, has rust up installed, and also brings in cargo watch. So tasks is cargo watch X run. So this is why cargo watch is running in the right hand panel here and whether this should sort of run at the start, run when somebody loads this. So this is pretty easy to test. Let's go hello YouTube and I'll save that. And we get hello YouTube just compiled out. So we have Rust code running in somebody else's server, not my computer, which is really actually kind of nice. We can see a couple of suggestions here. So like rewrite is raw string. I think that's a Rust analyzer helper. The git search file explorer. I accidentally clicked the VS code button in the top right. So I guess we're, uh, <laughs> opening VS code to see if we can pull it in. Let's pull that over to a new window. And then we've got source main here. So let's make a change here. Can I not make this bigger? Ooh, this is running really slowly for some reason. Yeah, this is, for some reason, this is dragging really slowly and I'm not sure why. Let's say hello, Rust Adventurers. I'll save that. So you can see that I have VS code open here and I'm on the website. So I'm technically collaborating with myself. Yeah, creating YouTube videos. 
but that's really cool. So I can actually have VS Code open. It's connected to this code sandbox. I can write some code here and then I can go back and it updates here. So presumably there's some kind of WebSocket connection or something like that, which is actually very cool. So immediately I wanna add a dependency, but I'm used to doing cargo add. So I can't find a way to immediately run something like cargo add. So I can't change the task that's running easily. I could probably change it in here, right? But that would be awkward for cargo add. So what is nom at 0.7, 7.0? I forget. I can't remember. <laughs> if I save this, does it compile or does it complain? It says it's fetching. <laughs> okay. So we've got nom installed. We've recompiled. Let's try to write fn rust maybe input string slice i result string slice we're getting all of our sort of like pop-ups and auto completes and things like that or not all of them necessarily but a few of them it is a little bit awkward with the sizing here i think that maybe you would want to use this at a smaller resolution let's make it a little bit smaller here so i'm not really getting all of the auto complete that i would want here for example like this function definition and that easily could be because I don't have the right things imported. For example, generate preceded function. The code actions aren't really available. When I'm trying to do autocomplete for like the imports for the use expressions at the top, that doesn't work either. Lucky, luckily, trusty old docs.rs is available. Uh, what is the other thing we needed? We needed any car. So you can see how this kind of gets squashed here, uh, which I don't love. Here we go. We're getting mismatched types, which is really good for us. Uh, the return type here is wrong, so I'll change that. This needs to be a tag hello, which we'll have to import. Hopefully, nope, it just says generate. So honestly, I think that's the biggest issue for me. I don't remember where these symbols come from, especially when I'm using nom. Sometimes I can remember them like character complete any car or something like that. But I don't remember if this is sequence, for example. So let's grab this, just name it value. We'll print line value. Again, I find myself kind of having to like squeeze these barriers on the sides or the sidebars. It's also a little noisy for me. We'll unwrap this and then what we'll debug V or input NV. Let's do let's debug both of them. And that'll be our program. So we get hello rest people. We've written the parser to use a tag of hello and then look for the first character. So that should be that R, we do get that R. So this is a viable Rust environment. It's not the best Rust environment. I would prefer the one that I have set up locally with all of my customizations and things, but this is very cool. If I, how, if I only had maybe like an iPad, I could see myself trying to use this. If I only, if I needed to collaborate with somebody on a stream or something or for a video, I could see using this, especially since it allows me to use VS Code uh, to collaborate with them and they don't have to be in VS Code to do that. So pretty exciting, pretty interesting. I don't know if I'm going to use it much. If you think I should start using this for the code that we write in some of these YouTube videos, I can totally do that. I typically put smaller examples in the Rust playground because I know it won't go anywhere, but we could easily start putting larger examples in these code sandboxes as well. Now, I don't think this will work for something like Bevy. I don't think we'll be able to run a game uh, other than compiling it, right? Just because of the graphics requirements. So this isn't a solution for everything, but it can work for quite a bit. So I hope you enjoyed this look into Code Sandbox and their new Rust support. And let me know what you think. If you make a project in Code Sandbox, leave a link in the comments so I can check them out. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.